Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Round 2 LST Landing Ship Tank Kit from Lindbergh. It's kit HL213 in their series. The kit has over 185 parts molded in gray with a roll of black thread and water slide decals. It's one 245 scale landing ship tank from the World War II D-Day invasion. Now it's a re-release, it's been made before and the original kit had um, a motorized version and this one has all the same parts with the exception of the motorized parts. Now the kit's seen multiple box arts and it's been issued under different brands in fact. The hole's a single piece with the deck in two pieces and many of the details are small so you'll have to take care assembling it. There's an updated set of decals that includes five different versions that can be assembled. I chose to build LST325 which actually landed at Omaha Beach on D-Day and is now berthed at Evansville, Indiana in a memorial museum. When you're done the overall length is 16 inches, 2 inches wide and 6 inches height on the stand to the top of the mast. Here are the decals for this kit and there's also some insignia and flagging that you cut out. Now we'll be using Model Master liquid cement for most of the assembly, sometimes super glue for strength and occasionally white glue if there's windows involved. But also remember please follow all of the manufacturer's uh, safety suggestions when using any of the products that you see or, or hear in the, in the kits review. We'll start working with the hull and the stern parts but prior to painting the hull rudders need to be installed. The anchor and the anchor port are painted and added after the overall hull is painted. Now note on the bottom of the hull there's a hole between the rudders. This was left over from the motorized version and can be filled for more uh, accurate detail. The rails on the side have no positive attachment points and the instructions aren't clearer about where they go. So I looked it over and did a little research and chose to install them on the third panel line from the top and the rear attachment even with the rudder mounting post. Now to paint the hull a US Navy uh, color I used Norfolk 65A anti-fouling red during the, that was used during the World War II era and a good alternative and close match to that color is red oxide primer. I used a little um, blue tape here to tape off the water line and then I painted the whole red oxide primer. Then once the tape, uh, once it's cured, tape off the color line for the black stripe and then paint the uh, sides of the whole uh, flat black. Next, uh, after it's fully cured, tape off the upper line uh, of the black paint there and then paint the hull a neutral gray. And note on the hull there's no marking as to where the lines on the ship are, are painted and based on reference photos uh, it varies from ship to ship and even uh, depends on when they are repainted. So um, you can pretty much uh, just uh, put it <laughs> about where you think it should go and I think you're good uh, as far as accuracy goes. The colors also kind of vary um, on, on the different types of uh, hues that are used. Now we can paint the anchor uh, port there is uh, installed into place and um, I painted that um, uh, port brass uh, with a black anchor and then the blades for the props are also brass and they can be installed now too. I painted the deck a dark gray color uh, like a whole gray and then um, I installed those onto the uh, hull uh, into position working carefully around the edges to make sure that it all sealed up and was uh, properly fitted. Now gather the bow components and all the parts are then painted the same neutral gray as the hull is and paint the guns a flat black and note the parts uh, do have a good deal of flash that will need to be trimmed off and cleaned up uh, with a uh, sharp hobby knife and some sanding sticks. The mold design shows its age um, when placing the parts there because there's no positive attachment points for them and kind of a slight location detail on the deck. So assemble the gun turrets by adding the mount into the turret and then add the single guns to the small mount and the twin gun to the larger turret. Now the turrets go in place on the bow. Assemble the ramp uh, winch and the plate and add it to the deck. Then add the ramp into place 
and the bow rails are installed on the front of the bow and now attach the small plates into place. Then add the anchor winch in place and add the control boxes. Get these parts out of the kit to assemble the mid deck and it's put together next. All the parts are painted neutral gray uh, again and add the 27 deck pads into place and these are there's little small marks on the deck for their locations so add the 10 pylons into place as well and then the 12 vent tubes following that. Now we can get these parts to work on the aft deck and that gets started now so all the parts again neutral gray and the roof sections are dark gray. Now the propeller is brass and the anchor is flat black. The decals 24 and 5 go on the lower section sides and decal 26 on the top section front to create ports and hatches. Now attach the winch and the winch plate and add that to the deck. Now add the small winches into place and add the vents into place too. Now the small plates are um, installed and then also the eight pylons to the deck. Add the rear battery room and install the upper section to the lower and then glue that unit to the deck. Now add the anchor and the propeller to the back wall of the lower section. The large vent goes on the lower section back and the small vent on the top section corner. Locate these parts to finish up the aft deck and then paint all the parts neutral gray. The guns and the anchor are flat black though and assemble the four small turrets by adding uh, the mount to the turret and then the single gun on the mount. Do the same with the large turret using the twin gun. On the large turret plank add the antenna array with the antenna and then the small turrets are mounted on the lower structure roof in each corner. Now the large turret is added to the battery room and the plank to the roof. On the lower structure uh, roof add a small, the small pylon and the main mast to the small mast. Now add the upper structure roof and then add the lookout with a ladder to it. Add a ladder to the lower roof up to the upper structure and the deck uh, to the lower roof and then on the back of the ship add the anchor guide to the anchor. Let's get these parts out to assemble the landing craft and then paint all the parts neutral gray and install the davits to the ship on both sides. Now using the uh, proper choice for your build, um, in this case I used uh, LST325, you can add the decal to the landing craft. Um, and then decals 16, 17, 18, 22, and 23. And LST393 though uses decal 19, 20, 21, and 22, and 23, for example. Then add the ramp to the craft and add the craft to the davit. These are the rail posts, so grab those and uh, paint those in neutral gray and get them uh, cured so that we can install those to the deck. So glue those to the deck and uh, in their locations and once they've cured um, uh, pretty well then add some thread to make the side rail chains. So once you've got the you know thread pretty carefully attached to one end of the line of rails string it along the rails into the slots on those and then do two lines per side and go behind the landing craft davits with the thread. Now it's time to decal the rest of the kit and um, you need to use a light coat of gloss spray in order for decals to um, s you know, settle in and not silver up uh, on your model. So I use a future polish uh, in, an air in an airbrush with a little thinner. Uh, but you can also use just a, a regular um, uh, lacquer um, um, gloss coat to, to give it a little shine so that you don't have any issues. Now uh, work slowly with these, they're small, and apply all the decals. Then if you need it, use some of that aftermarket setting solution to, uh, to make sure that they uh, adhere to any of the contours that you encounter uh, when you're putting your decals into place. Now you can tie some thread to the mast and down to the antenna array. And there's a uh, 48 star flag and a 50 star flag for either time period. Uh, plus there's some signal flags that you can add there too for uh, appearance and authenticity. So gather up the um, parts to uh, for the eight uh, lifeboats there and paint those flat black. Then add them to the deck leaning against the edge rails around the ship. 
Final item to assemble is the um, uh, stand. So assemble the stand and then paint it whatever colors you choose. You can highlight the print uh, in a contrasting color. And I did this one in flat black with some silver lettering. So the finished chip will sit on the stand without glue. There were some extra parts that were left over, um, duplicates of small pieces, but also some of the structure uh, for the motorized version um, that were just left on the molds. So these will be um, the pieces that are left over and whatever flags that you don't use are all that you'll have left. Originally designed by Lindbergh as a motorized play toy for kids, this kit didn't have a lot of extra detailing, but it's got enough and the subject matter is just excellent. You won't find too many models like this being produced anymore. And this vintage kit can still be found online. But the original ships, of course, were pretty slow, about 9 knots. Uh, but a 10-year-old could build these back in the day, even with a mix of 40 and 20 millimeter guns. Sometimes there was a 3-inch three, uh, three gun at the stern, but they were, they were lightly armed and uh, used support for defense generally. You can, like I said, you can still find these kits around, and if you do, uh, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope that you like this step-by-step -step premium scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook too. And as always, at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.